Someday you'll meet someone special. Why does everyone keep telling me that? Who else tells you that? Everyone? Anyway, it's a stupid idea. <laughs> You're stupid. Love is the strongest thing in the world. I think you'll find that metal is the strongest thing in the world, followed closely by dynamite and then muscles. Besides, I wouldn't even know it if I saw it. Surprise, surprise. The shoelaces are undone again. Oh, Cho Cho. You'll know when it happens. You'll feel it. It's a pain. My ass, I bet. In your tummy. Like, like you're full of butterflies. Yuck. Yeah, yuck. Come on, Shitla. Let's get the move on. What the f Hey! What's wrong with you? I'm worried about you, man. Are you drunk? Again? Yes. Yes, I am uh, drunk again at 11.11 there. Apparently, I'm 11 minutes late. But the, the star's anuses are all aligning tonight. We have uh, that clip, what was about love. We have, uh, we're up to episode 269. Cheers, cheers matey to that. Red face drink, what the, whoa. I'm like in the red room right now. This is maybe too red. Uh, it's Wednesday, February 10th. 2021 Valentine's Day is upon us upon us it is sort of a, a pun among us uh humongous fungus uh, thank you for uh, uh cheers cheers everybody uh I will be drinking uh Lone Star tonight I'm very I'm very happy I was able to find this in uh, the area uh, above the sewer actually Pretty much the deli that I'm stealing Wi-Fi from to run the show got Lone Star. I think they heard me uh, talking about it uh, one night. I was just like, yeah, man, I want some Lone Star. I was in there. I was, I was buying a 40 of Old E. I was like, yeah. can you guys get some Lone Star up in here? So we shall be drinking that tonight. But it is uh, Valentine's Day. Here. It's uh, the time for love. We're going to be talking about love tonight in, in the sewer. So we should just all relax. Maybe I, I was trying to kick my feet up earlier. I had to do the intro a few times. I'm a little drunk already. You know, it's a... Uh, alcohol is the uh, the, the lover's uh, fluid, right? It's Our, our show is going to be extra extra special tonight. I hope, I hope, if, if somebody's working for you and you find their, um, their work, if you find their, if they find their work, uh, if, okay, say you, say you hired somebody, you have an office and somebody left their work and say, say you're in a sewer and you, nah, and you happen to drop some papers. Would that be so wrong for your boss if he read that and used it? I don't. I don't really know the uh, the laws behind what I'm about to do tonight. But I found. I found a um, mystery man. I found a box of his because he made these recordings. Love stories, I think. I think they're called love. They're love stories because Diane. What does they say on the tape? Di Hold on. She has to. She stand. She has to be on the other side of the this like glass cage. I don't know why they put this glass cage up, but it might be the lawsuit I have with her uh, as well for uh, uh, touching and whatnot. But hold on one second. What the name of the tape? Oh, it's under the... Okay, hold on one second here. Uh, normal Romance. So, 
So um, I found a box of tapes called Normal Romance from Mystery Man, which are just, I think, I think they're very saucy, uh, un unreleasable. T there's hundreds of them. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of these tapes. Now, I don't know how many we're going to get through tonight. But these are probably the, the juiciest little nuggets of, of love that we could get. I might get sued, but, uh, yeah, episode 269, it's Wednesday. Uh, how is everybody doing? Um, uh, it, the, Stacy is dead. I don't know if anybody, um, this is like inside baseball. If this is the first time you're listening to Nick the Rat Radio, you're like, Stacy who? Stacy is the uh, medium between Discord, IRC, and Twitch chat. She would, she was the portal. And she's missing. Kind of like, uh, it's kind of like uh, Romeo and Juliet and if they got flushed down the toilet right now. Sort of something like that. Yeah. But I knew this was going to happen. I was listening to um, Hog Story the other night with uh, the episode with Sir Matthew on it. He just said he's just going to release uh, his fourth episode about maps. He said he was going to release that. But uh, I'm still waiting. I'm st uh, we're all waiting for that one. Um, but they mentioned Stacy's Dead too because we both share Stacy and Chad. I think they were like a, a romantic couple. These these two bots. I think bots do have uh, love. There's there's connections between them. Some of them get closer than others. Well, I, I, I've been talking way too long. I think it's time to um, play some music and just love. We'll just have love, everybody. Love. Uh. And if you have kids in the room, maybe make them leave. I don't know what Mystery Man... Some of these tapes have very weird names. I, I, Diane, do, do, did you listen to the ones we're going to play? Did you give me the... There's that one that I liked. I, I hope I don't get kicked off the air. Uh, well, thank you. They don't... My ears disappear in this weird studio lighting. But they are, they're pretty good. I like them. Okay, we should, uh, oh, there, I forget reading the Discord chat. It's over there. It's, wow, I got a huge hand. It's pink, too. Uh, let's, um, music. We got CJ Beards. Question my love. Sleep 
So I'm just really uh, hypnotized right now. I usually don't play uh, songs like that on this show. Usually start off with like a nice synthwave tune or something, but, but that was that was full of love. That song. Um, so, love itself. What 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 is what is love? Uh, baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me uh, anymore. What is love? Just a word. Is it is it um, something um, manufactured by uh, corporations? It must have must have existed at one point, like uh, like for real, or did it or did it not, not? But well, there's all there's a lot of different types of love. See that that's that's another uh, question uh, thing that stirs the pot. The pot gets real big, and the, you stir up the pot because. Sometimes there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's self-love, right? Diane, Diane, where are you? Love is 5D. Bushi is right. There's a, there's stuff happening. It's, it's a natural, it's a natural thing. It's going to happen to you. You're going to love something. Even if you are a Grinch, you're, you're going to wind up uh, loving something. Maybe, maybe that's, that's, uh, that's why Valentine's Day exists in our, uh, in our story line. Maybe that's why it's here. It's to celebrate that, that true thing. Maybe they're, let's just extend our imagination and say love is 100% uh, true. We need a Venn diagram or something. I don't know. We need a pie chart to see where love falls on there. Maybe we could, uh, somebody could call me and let me know uh, what is love. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Uh, you can call at 917-719-5923. Uh, just ask for Nick the Rat. I think I think we don't screen calls. We just take them live, right? I think this phone works. But uh, we do also play uh, voicemails. And I also want to say sorry to my doctor who keeps calling me and is telling me he's going to uh, send people to my, to my house to help with my ED. And I don't know how legal that is, doctor. And I know I cut off some of your calls, okay? But, but sometimes... You just have to hang up on people. Close the door. The best way to avoid conflict is, clo is close the door. Sometimes the door is love. Let's listen to a voicemail. 917-719-5923. Fuck you, Nick. Uh, it's probably just a glitch in the system there. Not... Uh, Nine one seven seven one nine five nine two three. I am putting a freaking dildo up my ass right now. Oh, 
Dai, chiudi il cazzo You ever, you ever hear, miss your lyrics? I was listening to some love songs. I was trying to get in the mood for Valentine's Day. I want to celebrate properly, so I, I, I painted the sewers red. I filled it with the blood of uh, peop, uh, citizens of New York City. Uh, don't, don't tell Coney Island Hospital about this, but I might, I might have come across a large supply of uh, human blood that was mistakenly placed in the deli right above the studio but it's flowing outside you could see all the the mini hearts wouldn't that be cool if blood was like little mini hearts just floating through it i feel like i'm in a bloody submarine right now the sewer is uh, going crazy uh, so i'm i'm a little stoned right uh, well let's see let's see uh yeah I was, I was listening to uh which that's uh ooh baby it goes like, ooh, baby, I, lo I love you. I always thought it was like, I, I thought they said, I love you when, but it says, I love uh, your way. Ooh, baby, I love your way. I always thought it said, ooh, baby, I love you when. Don't know why I thought it was that, but I was reading lyrics and I was like, oh, wow. So now I know that those lyrics are not what I thought they were forever. And the strangest thing is it happened to me twice in one day. I was I was listening to uh I would walk 500 miles and I thought they were saying uh a woman's name I thought they were saying Yolanda they're saying like ta da da la da la da to la da do 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 to do do da da do but I could have sworn I could have sworn those guys were saying uh Yolanda Ooh, whoa uh Peter Peter Frapsaton he he faps ton peter peter fap ton man i wish i was nick fap ton that would be uh the phone lines are blowing up over here by the way the it's a uh, actually getting a little out of control. We're trying to hang up on as many people as possible because the more people that call in, it's like building up a, a quantum physics number that becomes uh, uh, the, the perfect number to actually let through through the phone line. Uh, uh, Diane, can we, let's do another voicemail. 917-719-5923. We, we got a voicemail coming in here. Hey, Nick. Uh, look. I know you must get lonely and all those vast expanses of sewer yeah, and you just being a sole little mediocre uh, rat, but um, you really, you got to stop calling me, man. Like when I'm at work, I get these uh, text messages and calls. I mean, I love you, buddy, and I understand you're lonely, but... uh. I mean, it really interrupts my masturbation schedule. So, anyway, I got a joke for you. How much wood, no, how many woods could a rat suck if he had his own podcast? I'll take my answer on the show. <laughs> I'm going to give you something on the show you... We should probably, um, all the music I play is, uh, CC by 3.0. It's, it's free. Uh, it's free. You can, you can play it too, uh, free as well. If you go to, uh, SoundCloud and, and you look for Nick the Rat and slash likes, we're gonna, we're gonna be right back with, with the donation segments. And then we're gonna open up this, uh, box of, of tapes. These tapes we have, uh, what were they called again, Diane? 
Uh, normal romance. This is going to be a... We're going to be playing a very private, possibly, possibly not wanting to be released uh, tape. I might get sued by my own employee. This, this is like questioning uh, the boundaries of of like uh, work stuff. Like, how close can you and your employees get? And how thick is that plexiglass keeping me away from Diane? Uh, we should uh, let's listen to uh, another song here. We got uh, pulled with alone. Uh, it's not very Valentine's Day lovey, dovey. What's going on here? Oh, we'll be we'll be right back with more Nick the Rat. Thanks, uh, do wad do him? Do do wad um? Fuck, I got it ready. Welcome back to Nick the Rat. Promise you we got these tapes. Diane is currently using a nail polish remover and uh, rain alcohol to remove the Gorilla Glue, glue uh, sealing some of the cassette tapes. We didn't listen to them. There's hundreds, There's so many of them, but we're going to randomly play a couple. But we gotta thank people first. We gotta thank uh, the the fine folks, the sewer, the the sewer chatters. Uh, we have to thank these people before we maybe break the law and I'll go to jail for a long time. I don't think I'd, I would. I would. Eh. 
You ever, you ever see a rat in jail? Well, they, they don't last. They don't last long in in. Uh, that's why they put. That's why they put rats in really nice jails. With uh, little bars and, and that little ball and the the, the bottle. And you lick that ball and you get that. You get the water. Sometimes some uh, some good treats. The donations work like this. You could go to nicktherat.com and you could click donate. You could send physical objects to me at P.O. Box 9549, Brooklyn, New York, 11209. It's on my website somewhere. Uh, I think I got one thing in the, the mailbox today. Or you could, uh, whoa, that's weird. Uh, you could... You could, uh, if you're on Twitch, you could also give me a, a sub on Twitch as well. If you know how to use the internet, you know where Nick the Rat is. He's not on Instagram or Facebook because he was kicked off. He is on YouTube. He was kicked off once before. Don't tell YouTube. They'll kick me off again. A different thing, though. Anyway, let's go. Uh, I'll go over the donations now. I'm just, who... Too damn high to read here. Oh, what the hell is that? I got a chicken nugget. Oh, we got an advertisement that came in. Let's see here. Once, uh, uh, uh. We have four twenty from NW. Thank you so much for the uh, donation. And I think that's it. Unless I did something wrong here. Uh, what, when, when is this from? Uh, that's from... Yeah, it's from last week. That's last week's donation. Yeah, we got, uh, we got 420 today. From NW. And then we got this lovely uh, check in the mail. We're going to do some ASMR. Oh, we got a Bushi Bantan sub as well in the in the, the, the Twitch. I think that's where the FT, uh, four dollar, three, four dollars. Cheers to everybody. Uh, I just hope everybody is healthy and uh, somewhat entertained. Let's open this here check. It does sound like a fart. Uh, whoa. Five beanie babies. Thanks for your show, Sir Cross Stitch. I will cash this in the deli above the, the sewer later tonight and buy a hoagie and kick the deli cat right in his pussy. Uh, th uh, thanks for all the donations. We did, there was like an audio file attached to, it was like, I think it was an ad. We, okay, let's play an advertisement. We're going to be right back because, you know, I think there there might have been missing donations there. It was there's usually more than just one donation. That's it just it's uh maybe I uh, Diane did you refresh the page? Okay, it's fine. Uh, we're gonna play some real advertising. This is where the real money comes from. It comes from uh, giant corporate uh, uh, entities. If you didn't know, so if you're not uh, friends with uh, people in suits and tight skirts and high heels, you're probably not gonna make it in uh, the world of business. I just want everybody to know this. If you're looking to make uh, money in America, you, you need to wear a suit with high heels. Uh, uh, Diane, what, what, are you going to play the ad already? I don't have anything else. To, there's, uh, there's a, yeah, okay. Um, which one are you going to play? Play one for, 
Valentine's Day. Are you performing any rituals this year? Don't forget your ritual candles. Every ritual candle bought from the dark sewer network are 100% guaranteed to be blessed by the satanic Pope himself. So thick, so full of power, so ritual. Order your ritual candles on the Dark Sword Network today. 917-719-5923. How we make mo- that's how we make money in the industry. We play uh, Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Nah, it's all the chicken you crave, baby. And new chicken nugget juice exclusively at Casa Del Waffle. Casa Del Waffle has combined the chicken nugget flavor you crave with all the convenience of drink. And chicken nugget juice. Get chicken nugget juice in three fresh flavors. Buffalo, honey barbecue, and fried. Chicken nugget juice only at Casa Del Waffle. Get clogged. Giant corporate sponsorship. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, let, let's listen to some people that put free music out on SoundCloud. Because they are adding to culture. Vlad must first friend the street runner. Uh, f- uh, I can't click the word. Diane, why is the button so sticky? That better be chicken juice.
Welcome back to Nick the Rat Radio. I hope you're having a fun time tonight. I'm having a great time. It's uh, it's the love week. It's time for love. It's time to maybe get sued by Mystery Man's... Uh, actually, Mystery Man... Does Mystery Man have any people? Do you have a manager? Or who do we send the check to? Can we talk to their finance team? Yeah, see who we send the check to and find out... Uh, you could possibly... Uh, hi, everybody. Back office stuff. Sorry. It's... We're back on the air. We're having a good time tonight. You don't want to mess with the Oktarian lawyers. They will bite your head off literally. Uh, we, what? We're here for... We're here for some dirt. We're here for some mystery man, uh, filthy, filthy, filthy romance stories. They're filthy, right? And this might be weird, people. We didn't listen to them yet. We don't know... Mister. Okay, look. I'll explain the backstory here. So Mystery, Mystery Man does the... Uh, for people that are new, uh, Mystery Man does Bigfoot Assault for, for uh, the Dark Sewer Network. See, Nick the Rat, I, as an, an entity, I work for the Dark Sewer Network... And that goes into the sewer, where I am one of the compartments down here. They shift me around sometimes. They make me do some very strange stuff. But this is all just an experiment. To see how much... Uh, we'll explain that one later, but... Mystery Man is uh, subcontracted through the Dark Sewer Network to do Bigfoot Assault. He reads stories about uh, horrendous acts of Bigfoot. Now, he's been giving us more stuff than Zindu has. Zindu hasn't been around at all. But there's a whole system. There's a system down here. Okay? And uh, I hope Mystery Man does not have the right to sue it. Can we... Diane, just play the tape. Okay, we're going to play this. Um, now, remember, you have uh, sensitive ears. You might want to turn this off right now. I don't know what mystery man... There, there's a lot of tapes. We found them. We found these tapes. There's a lot. And they were covered in sticky substances... Possibly blood, okay? So, uh, there might be some uh, adult language we're about to hear. Diane, play it. Play uh, this one. It's giving it to me here, right here. Uh, this one says... Uh, Number one. This one's called number one. It's a normal romance. Number one. How do I load this here? Remember, if you have a sensitive ears, you might want to leave. Uh, can we play the one called Super Bowl first? We're going to play number one first. It's number, this one will ease us into what we're about to hear. This is the... the sorry, people. I don't know, what we're, I don't know what's going to happen. As they floated through space, they both imagined different pornographic sexual positions. One imagined rubbing their lover's bald head as he pressed it as far as he could down into his lap. The other wanted to tug on their fuck machine's beard to staple themselves as he rode his giant cock. Sex in zero-g was everything they imagined. They could spin their 69ing into an infinite orgasm shooting sperm into the air surrounding them both like a cum-covered yin-yang. Oh, and the toys in the future that they could play with. 
Using holograms, they could attend massive orgies in the time of Caligula together. They could internally scan each other and replicate attachable objects that could move and fit perfectly inside one another. But one thing would never change. After every shag, as Will left Jean alone on his spunk-covered mattress, Jean always said to him in a loving manner, You will always be my number one. That wasn't, that wasn't so bad. Dan, can you translate that to me? I don't know what he said. There's a hundred of these tapes? We're not going to play all of them tonight. We're not playing all these tapes tonight. Um... Uh, A hundred of them. Okay, let's listen to uh, let's listen to a voicemail. Um, the phone lines are blowing up right now, but we're not picking the phone up because I think they're they're from like religious groups. I think I think the religious groups are calling the show right now. Nine one seven seven nine five nine two three. Oh my god, man, this is yeah. I don't even I don't even want to get this mic out of my get this mic out of my face. Hello. I mean, I don't even want to continue with the show after that. I mean, good God. It, I mean, I'm serious, man. What? Was that bad? Oh, my God. Yeah. Was, was it that bad, Buzz? I don't know what to do. You know, I don't know what to do after that. That is just, just disgusting. That's pathetic. I mean, that's just it's gross. It's fruity. It's fruity. Take about ten steps away from my freaking mind. Have an open mind. Oh, God. Let the love. Let the love. Every goddamn time I hear tough guy, every everything is a oh, my God. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, shut up. Let the, let the love in. Just shut your stupid face. Oh. Just shut your face. Oh, my God. I look. Look, I'm going to go back to radio graffiti, man. Diane, are we getting sued? Oh, f uh. I usually am not very uh, worried. I'm usually not, uh, not, uh, not a very worried person, but that's, he sounded upset. Do you know it soothes the savage beast? A uh, uh, music. Let's listen to Victoria Shimshire's version of Jolene. He sounded mad. Jolene, 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 Jolene. I'm begging of you, please don't take my man.
olan kal. Imagine uh, writing a song to a lady so they won't have sex with your dude, uh, your beau. Uh, that's. Wait, I think we have a caller on the line. Hold on, let me see if this works here. Uh, where's the phone? One sec. Uh, caller. Uh, hello. Caller, it's it's midnight in the sewer. It is. It is midnight in the sewer. It's a very magical time. Do you have a Do you have a boner right now? Uh, only at midnight in the sewer do I have a boner. All right, so uh, we're we're it's we like got our my Viagra. We got the antennas set up. We're ready to do some ham radio and going on right here. <laughs> uh, uh, caller, do you do you believe in love? Yes, I do. I, actually, you know what a better question would be. Um, Did you hear my sigh when I when I said that? Uh, I thought you were having. I thought you were just jizzing because you were talking to Nick the Rat on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I think like the song was right that love hurts. I was about to say, yeah, love could be deceitful. It could be. It could, it's like a trap. It's a trap. It's it's a trap. But that's a. Uh, but is that really love then? What is, is that was just an erection for somebody that didn't have one for you? Perhaps there might have been like Maybe, some, but I mean, like a mental illness. Have you ever been in love with someone that you're no longer in love with? What? Oh, no, my don't bring it up then. My grandmother. <laughs> we'll skip to something else. My grandmother's no longer with us. Well, no, no, not that. No, 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 no. We all have that. Even, uh... She was a great lady. Like, she started all this bullshit. She was a... She was a podcaster? Well, no. But... <laughs> she... If it wasn't for her, there she, wouldn't be uh, this podcast. She was the patriarch of the family. Let's just say the sewer uh, tunnels uh, run deep in in the rat family. <clears throat> Rats have a lot of kids, though, too, right? Or oh, fuck yeah! There's, but so you, her, you like... know, her grandmother was the start of it too. It's it goes on, yeah, to till we get to the uh, the nugget of the start. Imagine if there's words that exist that are just uh, not true. Like, imagine imagine you can't start anything. But we made the word start to uh, uh, mimic what we see. As, to as explain we what we see. Yeah, like, uh, when you say you start your car, did you really start your car? Or was your car already there and uh, was going to be in motion anyway? And if you started it, didn't you end it being dormant? So you've ended something. And if, but if you ended it, why would it just disappear? How could you restart something? There has to be an ending for you to start it, right? Ah, uh, yeah. But if start really or does means the what start it means, have to come to an end. 
But when it comes to an end, it re well, I guess it's the wave theory. I guess there's uh, some other stuff happening that is not uh, explainable. Ah. I'm not gonna. Uh... Are you gonna eat extra chocolate this weekend for Valentine's Day? No. <laughs> I'll drink extra alcohol, probably. <laughs> Cheers to that, matey. That's that's sad, but that's the truth. Do you want to be my Valentine? I will definitely be your Valentine, 100%. I'm going to send you one of those little... I should have already sent you one. It would have been in your P.O. box already. Remember those little tiny cards you would give the kids in elementary rat school? Yeah, right outside my uh, white van. It's like, be my rat or whatever. They were so small and tasty. The cards, uh, they had candy in it. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of chocolate do you prefer? I don't so know which type to send. I am definitely Dark a chocolate connoisseur. Or uh, milk. Let me tell you something. Out of all the chocolate in the world, uh, if you could uh, imagine the most freshest uh, the piece of succulent brown you could just put in your on your tongue and just be like, ah, it's Hershey's. I'm just, I, I like 80% dark chocolate. That's my favorite there. It's it's not a... Hershey's is... Is Hershey's really chocolate? Is there any uh, actual... It is chocolate, but it's not really... Uh, <clears throat> it's not really your top tier stuff. Your your best stuff usually typically comes out of like Belgium, but that's there's so many like mm, artisanal chocolates that are made throughout the world now. Is there I know there's cocoa, like a, cocoa plants there's like a in couple Belgium? of brothers in New York. There's a couple of brothers in New York that make chocolate that's pretty famous, but it's expensive. It's really freaking expensive. It's a, it's a, it's quite the, uh, it's quite the, the industry, the chocolate. And how do they make white chocolate? Uh, Is it like anti dye? Sure on that, but it's technically, I don't think it's a real chocolate. It's like it's chocolate more, without the, say, the yeah. chocolate? It's like, it's not traditional chocolate in the sense of how it's made, because I don't think it contains like the uh, the cocoa nibs that, or cacao nibs that traditional chocolate does. Caller, have you ever so, been do you covered? Like white chocolate? Have you ever been covered in chocolate? I have not. I had a cousin that was a rabbit, and uh, they covered that motherfucker in chocolate, and then they uh, they killed him, and they kind of like pulled his bones and guts out out of it, and it was like a shape of a rabbit, and it was hollow inside, and they and they and they and they, they sold it to they sold it to some uh, celebrities in Hollywood. And it ended up in a basket full of fake grass, I think, right? It was real grass, the finest chiba you could smoke the side of uh, the Rockies. The sticky icky. The stickiest of ickiest. Imagine, did you ever, you ever give drugs for a Valentine's Day present? Like, hey baby, here's a Valentine's Day present. Here's some drugs. I think that'd be great. No, but that, prob that, that probably would have uh, helped a couple of relationships of mine, definitely. And and let me remind you, alcohol is a drug too. They could be like, "Hey, I, oh, if, you if know you, what? I have given drugs, <laughs> given wine before." Oh, there you go. Happy Valentine's Day. Here, here's a bottle of booze. Oh, I'm drinking go. Miller's now. Where's my fucking Lone what Star? You, where the hell do you get Lone Star in New York? That's like an anomaly. Right above in the deli, right. I'm stealing the Wi-Fi from. Actually, <laughs> it's. <laughs> It took me a long time to find it my uh, in my area, but well, it is in the one one two zero nine area right now. It's right near an overpass. Is there nefarious 
feelings around that overpass. Sometimes there's these lights that go off around the area. Yeah. Mysterious lights. You probably don't want to be there when it's dark, right? No, I don't want to be there during the daytime. You're talking, if people you're see me, like, like they it, scream, it, they, they it, try to kick me, it's fucked up. <clears throat> that happens when you're a rat. It's, the world is tough on rats. It's tough for everybody. It's really tough for rats, though. Yeah, yeah. You know, especially in a big city like that, that you're a, uh, a much smaller person. They should have passageways for you. Oh, wait. It's called the sewer. They're That's called... the sewer, though. Yeah. Caller, are you on drugs right now? Of course. We do not advocate drug use on the Nick the Rat radio show. Where's my beer? Let's listen to a voicemail of here. 917-719-5923. That caller, it's offensive. Drug use on this show? I'm here now. To start off, I'll have a candle. So that way if certain someone can't clean the room smells like butt crack. And over here, I have a bottle of social justice warrior tears. Mmm, delicious. Finally, of course, Nick the Rat's autograph, which now it'll be like dating with a small piece of him every time I hop in the tub. It'll be totally legit. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Uh... W-S-T-R will golden hour. We just passed the golden hour. Uh, let's have a little fun down here in the sewer, right? We'll be right back. Uh,
Hello, caller. Caller? Caller, are you there? Hello. Uh, this is, uh, Mr. The Rat? Yeah. Hello. Hi. I want to wish you a very... Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, thank you. Happy, Love you. Happy Valentine's Day to you as well. I hope you enjoy uh, tasty chocolates, have uh, nice smells in the air. You're surrounded by people that love you and that you love yourself. There's, there's a couple of issues with love. There's a, there's a, there's a whole different variety of different types of love. There's, there's like a br brotherly love, and then there's like motherly love. Uh, it's it's a, a lot of fam family situations, apparently. And then there's the people that you love in other ways. And then people know that you could love them, so they take advantage of that. And there's advantage ta uh, takers. Uh, uh, and then there's people you don't want love from. Frankly, frankly, you're like, hey, please stop loving me. You there, sir. Miss. Cat, dog, rat, stay away. Back down. And then there's love that people make weird recordings about ah uh. i don't know where we're in the show right here but let's listen to let's listen to this let's let's listen to another uh, a mystery man normal romance dang can we play this i don't i don't know what's happening in the show right here i am full of love I'm about to explode Reminder, if you have sensitive ears, you might want to leave the room. Don't know what you're about to hear. I've seen Mystery Man kill a person before. And these are his personal tapes. Called Normal Romance. There's hundreds of these things. We're just grabbing a couple out. We're going to play them. And which one are you going to give me? She has to like put it through this. All right. Diane kind of requested to have me put in a smaller area in this in the sewer studio. For for reasons which, you know, I legally accepted and agreed to when I signed I Diane I signed it. And I removed all the cameras. <sighs> Okay, look. What? The Super Bowl. We're going to listen to the Super Bowl one. This is the one I wanted to hear. This is the 
one that I was able to open. It was covered in Gorilla Glue. It was gross. Okay, uh, let's listen to uh, a, a normal romance story. This one's titled Super Bowl. I'm excited because there was just a Super Bowl, right? There was a Super, there was a Super Bowl. If you have, if you have uh, young ones in the room or if your ears are very sensitive, you might want to uh, uh, grow up. Chad was watching the big game on his big TV from his big couch, grabbing handfuls of chicken tendies covered in cheese out of a giant bowl. Chad lived big and loved even larger. Chad's lady Becky had an ass the size of two mature watermelons, and they were always lotioned up and ready to ride. Chad chugged a brewski and called to his lady. Loudly, he yelled, Ooga! Booga! And then came the sound of Becky's ass cheek. And then came the sound of Becky's ass cheeks clapping down the hall as she ran towards her lover. She slammed that fat white ass up and down on Chad's crotch. This inflated Chad's member from a deflated bike tire into something that resembled a football. It looked as if the big game was about to begin on the other side of the giant TV. Becky leaped like a toad on top of a nearby ottoman and dropped her pink thong. Chad hooted. He chugged another brewski, slammed it on his head, flexed like the Incredible Hulk and his giant cock ripped through his basketball shorts. He ravaged that ass well into the fourth quarter. All sorts of diabolical sex positions, <coughs> sexual positions, and all sorts of fluids filled that room that evening. Until Chad's mother called him. She yelled from one flight above him. She let him know that him and his girlfriend were making too much noise in their basement, and she politely asked them to keep it down. And if they didn't, no more tendies. And that was stupid. That's really what he writes and talks about in his free time. I feel bad playing these now. There's hundreds of these things. Politely axed. Where's that guy from? Um... Hey, my thing could parse emojis, Gene Witch, okay? My thing could parse the uh the Red Sea. We 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 got a uh, more voicemail here. I've got some topics we had to talk about as well, but 917-719-5923. If you'd like to talk about love or anything in particular, you could give me a call right now. We could talk about it live. This is late night radio, unscripted. I guess obviously unscripted, as you could tell. Nine one seven seven one nine five nine two three. So check this out. Um, what if? Okay, so what do Jesus, Prince, and Michael Jackson have in common? They were born black and turned white. I was gonna. Well, why though? I mean, paused. well, people question whether that's true with uh, Jesus, but I mean, we all know that he was a, a black Asiatic male, 
uh, that turned white uh, or something along those lines. Now, yeah, but Jesus only uh, turned white uh, theoretically. Uh, uh, his his story, he was rewritten white. Which is very strange. Why Why did we have to take Aunt, Aunt Jemima off the box and write, like, uh, General Mills? I forget, it's Pearly, Pearly Mills? I don't think I really want to eat uh, pancakes that are, that are pearly. And, and not only that, they just removed her picture. They, they, still say, they still say Aunt Jemima on the box for a little while. They're like, this formal, formerly known as Prince, this is now Aunt Jemima. Uh, there's still more to this voicemail. What else do they have in common? Oh, they were hermaphroditic. Well, I mean, um, hmm. Now, what does that have in common? Uh, mushrooms. So, what if the shot of Turin is actually a spore print? Yeah. Whoa, like a mycelial, mycelial, mycelial network? Mycelial? What salutations, good sir? Well, hello. Did hello. you did you come in here through the mycelial network? <clears throat> well, possibly, good sir. How else would I get in here? You usually you would call the the phone. But you're technically t- you are correct. You're like in my head right now. I am. And I'm trying to get you into your head so that way you can try to come into my tub. I'd love to come in your tub. Uh, Caller, Caller, isn't audio weird? Because right now, you and me are both talking over uh, uh, a single a single line that is going into somebody. You hear, you hear me in your head, right? Precisely. But now I hear you in my head. Do you, do you and this is another thing too cuz since we don't we never met each other we don't know what we what both of us look like don't we No I know what you look like we have we trace every call I what have do, drones outside your What house. do I look like Dad, can you print the picture It's in black and white It's a little blurry too You just kind of look like a, a heat outline all right, we don't we don't have uh, X ray vision. On, we we I can see your heat outline. You're about five, five five, when you're lying down. <clears throat> you are correct. Wow, Nick. Wow, I am back. I'm actually very impressed. Nick, I actually have a question for you. Oh, what's up? S- since we're talking about erotic stuff, oh my. <laughs> Oh, it's getting a little hot talking about this subject. But, uh, do you know what a calipigian is? A calipigian? Yes. I've had, I've had intimate intercourse with, uh, New York pigeons. But I'm only on the Ooh, East Coast. I don't really go out to the like? West Coast, so, you know. What is that like? Probably the same as the West pigeons, but, uh, paler. Are those birds from California? Uh, caller, what is the, the dirtiest sex maneuver you know? It is called the rusty trombone. There's so much oh dirtier my. than the rusty trombone, my friend. Have you ever tried it? Well, I... I only, I only do missionary. This is a... I'm a devout, uh... Catholic? Something? Oh, bullshit, Nick. Have you ever heard of a Mississippi bird bath? Mississippi bird bath? Is, is, is that like a, is that like a bukkake, but for birds? No, that, this, this is, this is all written within the urban dictionary. So it's going to be very filthy, very filthy stuff. Well, let me hear the definition of it. It's when you, when you, uh, filling... <laughs> Hold on one second. <laughs> Blapo. Oh, 
I wish I read this before I brought it up. Well, let's hear it. Come it's on, disgusting. It okay, out. filling a southern girl mouth with Kool-Aid. Making her get on her knees with her mouth open while you, you dip your balls in it. Why is that a Mississippi bird patch? So it's a bukkake, but for the Kool-Aid man. No, no, she she just has she just has Kool-Aid in her mouth and you're dipping your balls in her mouth, but why cool? Why is Kool Aid and Mississippi uh, combined there? That's so, I don't like that one. How about a How about a flying circus? What is a flying? Is is when you're when you're flying through the sky and you get in a bukkake full of clowns while you're skydiving? It is a sex act in which a woman is reverse cowgirl on top of a man. And then they attempt to jump throw her to another man <laughs> standing by a wall. <laughs> unbeknownst, oh to, unbeknownst to her, the second man plants to sidestep. This is violent. Why would this be a thing? And uh, sidestep and let her hit the wall and fall down, hopefully leaving Sounds her romantic. writhing in agony. Both men ejaculate <laughs> on her. This is not that's not that's not a Valentine's Day maneuver. That's that's horrible. Well, what is your favorite Valentine's Day remover besides the missionary? I like the reverse blumpkin. Ooh, ooh. I like that so very much. Do you know what a reverse blumpkin is? Yes. Yes, I do. What is it? It's when a person's sitting on the toilet, but you're giving them, you're giving them head while you're taking a shit on the floor. I don't know what it is. That's, that's disgusting. You would know something. <laughs> uh, hold on one second. Let me, I, I forget how to look at this. The What is going on here? Goofy, please be a deer and hand me my bubbles for my bubble bath. Are you about to get in the tub? Thank you. Thank you. You're such a babe. What? No. I, <laughs> Did you I'm, hear? I'm already in the tub. I'm already in the tub. Did you hear about uh, uh, Marilyn Manson? Marilyn Man. Oh, didn't he like get accused for like treating his women like shit? Not only his women, but his men too. Apparently, he's just a giant asshole. Did you? Could you have ever imagined that? Well, I mean, all the, all the, all these Christian parents back in the nineties were all like, "Yeah, he's such an asshole." Well, they were saying his art was or was uh, making assholes. The, I don't know, the, but then the, again, par the parents, the parents, the parents back in the day, the Christian parents, precisely. Was was saying this this whole time. So, do you think that they were right this whole time? Ah, uh, no. no, no. Truthfully, I could say yes in a in a joking manner, like uh, yes, or uh, like if if <clears throat> if his music was written by uh, it's it, if you if you copy the song of an asshole, oh, that's. I'm an asshole, though. And, it would sound shitty. And we're all assholes to some extent. What? When do you? When do you? I don't we know. did. We did. It, technically, Nick, we did start it off as assholes because that's the first thing that develops when we're in the womb is our assholes. Do you think Cheerios are just a bunch of assholes? Well, what about Fruit Loops? Colorful assholes. Well, Nick, More I sugar. hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day. How did they get the color on the Cheerios, by the way? What? How, how did they make... They use dye, right? Dye makes Fruit Loops the colors they are? They use... Well, they use guys for Fruit D Loops? Uh, well, I hope so. Let me hang up on this guy. He's trolling me right now. That guy's trolling. <sighs> Come on, people. Nine ones. Let's play some music. I gotta relax.
Amar with Worthy. Looking in the mirror Just to see an empty stranger Who's yelling backwards in my head I don't know what's wrong with me, but it's not the best that I could be. I must have done something wrong in the process. Cause being who I am is trying to change for everyone but that when my reflection step back. I get so upset when it's not what you guys want. I'm sorry. I'm ashamed of myself But it ain't over when my little lady says It ain't over when my little lady says I love you I don't know what is going on You always told me to be strong enough You can knock me down with a feather What what is a uh, red forty? By the way, I think I might have actually fell into a tub of red forty. I look like a pistachio, the red pistachio nut. I guess that's what uh, that's what they do. They uh, probably just eat a whole bunch of red pistachios over some fucking Cheerios to get the red ones. Got beer all over the place. It's fucking 49 degrees in the sewer. It's going to snow again out of here. I I moved the uh the thermometer clock, the doom clock uh away from the servers and I put them near the the refrigerator. <coughs> Yellow 6. Uh, actually, earth colors are... Uh, less poisonous. Blues are the most poisonous dyes. Well, at least in oil paint making. Like uh, ultramarine blue. Uh, earth colors are like browns, yellows. Uh, they even are greens an earth color? I don't know if green is uh, uh, emerald. Where do they get uh, green dye? That's also a different medium too. That's for oil paint. I know. I know a lot of. I used to work at an art supply store, so I uh, know a lot about art supplies. They aren't all earth colors. Uh, bl uh, ultramarine blue is extremely poisonous. If you're making uh, uh, oil paint and you're using dye, holy shit! Wall of text there.
But yeah, you could you could Google those words. They're like ultramarine blue and earth earth uh, uh oil uh dye oil uh, dyes oil earth. I f- f- you think I do research for this show? I do. I research my employees' uh, work that they leave hidden under desks. Games Workshop, uh, Warhammer. I see 2D colors. Uh, we're getting into the weeds here. Where are we in the show? What time is it? It's almost one o'clock. Oh, okay, here we go. We just played song number six, which means... We have to talk a little bit more about Marilyn Manson. Uh, Trent Trent Reznor came out and was like, "That guy's a that guy is a prick." There was a whole bunch of allegations. Uh, I guess Marilyn Manson would uh, have have uh, intercourse with the lady from Westwood, the blonde lady, when she was like a a teenage, like late teen. She was she was of age, but she said she would wake up to. Marilyn Manson having sex with you. Ugh. I don't I don't know if it, I usually I usually leave If if Marilyn Manson was having sex, I'd probably stay too. I'd stay. You know, hey, you know what's what's going to happen? He's he probably has a really small penis. You wouldn't feel anything. But, uh, and then some other lady said that he, he pulled a gun out and put it to her head. It's like, I'll shoot you. Go, wow, here. You're, you're a nice, he, he sounds like a, a, tr- a trashy, trashy guy. But I, I never met him. I, I can't uh, say for sure exactly what he's like. But if Trent Reznor said that, He's probably not the best. I'd rather hang out with Trent Reznor than Marilyn Manson then. That's all I could really gather from this story so far. I'm not going to have... And I guess if I was going to have sex with either one of them, I'd I'd probably rather have sex with Trent Reznor than Marilyn Manson as well. Make love. I would rather make love with uh, Trent, Trent Reznor than Marilyn Manson. In a completely straight way. I'd make straight love with Trent Reznor. Ah. And then there's that ar- arm- army hammer guy. The guy that was like, I want to eat your ribs on um, that. So so there's a new story that he pi- he pinched a girl's butt. He pinched a girl's butt and it she, he pinched it so hard she posted the black and blue. On Instagram. She was like, hello world. Thumbs up my bruised ass. She should use mayo. It'll make it less bruised if you're thumbing up it. But he got he got kicked off a whole bunch. Of, there's so much like, uh, uh, who knows what's going on? Bullshit happening in such who gives a fuck places. It's it's crazy out there. What, what will there will the uh, has there been any men that came out talking about? Uh, uh, I guess I would just call them narcissist, right? Is is nar are. Instead of calling them like sex freaks or assholes or uh, or, or just going going to like uh, instead of calling them like a Nazi, I get like is is Marilyn Manson? Not, he's not. Uh, but the worst thing you could it comes down to narcissism, right? Like if a person's a narcissist, they only care about themselves, and if they they're doing that, they're they're failing. You're you're failing at a lot of things in life. You gotta you gotta embrace people. Truthfully, you can't lie to them. You gotta don't wait till they're sleeping to love them.
Uh, is is narcissism a sin? Is that one of the is gluttony? There's a whole bunch of things there. Caller, are you a narcissist? Uh, hello, are are you still talking about Marilyn Monroe? Well, how could you stop? She had such a uh, Uh, when is the, the, the only dude that ever came out really about sexual, uh, being sexually harassed was, uh, there's the guy that was against the, the president in that TV show. And then there was Terry Crews. There might've been some other, there's other ones that are, that are coming out, but they're coming out against, uh, church people. I mean, like... When is when is there going to be a, a man coming out about a sexual allegation against a woman? Is that ever going to happen? Has that happened? Has I have have I just missed it? Are are men the most sexually deviant, depraved, sexual predators out there? There's no uh, no if there's no female. There's no uh, the only time you ever hear about the uh, the female sexual predators is when they go to jail because they did it to students and they were teachers and they got caught. Jail because they did. Caller, can you lower your radio? Yeah, yeah, I'll lower it. What's going on, Nick? I'm talking about. Uh, do you think? Do you think there will be a, a sexual allegation uh, against a woman? in the entertainment business? Um, well, since you have, well, since, okay, well, how do I put this right? Since you have a lot of people, you know, transitioning into different uh, genders, I should say, so, possibly in the near future. So it's going to be like, oh, do, okay, this, this is all, uh, sp- Okay, like, 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 let, okay, I just let, let, let's just say this. Let's just say this, okay? Yeah. Let's say, for example, that yes. a girl transitions into a guy, okay? okay? And then you have a guy transition into a girl. Oh. I could see it possibly happening in the near future. Yes. But would the, yes, it would possibly happen. Would the guy be molesting the girl, or would that be the girl molesting the guy? However, you see, it's a confusing subject right there, Nick. Uh, but yeah. Um, Would that be weird if like the first woman molester act uh, in the entertainment business was actually a man? Was it- well, I could, I could see, well, possibly the only way I could see if a man it would come out, you know, against a woman, if the woman was Rosie O'Donnell. Didn't uh, t- uh I well, I'd hate to bring this up, but uh, Roseanne Barr because uh, Rosie O'Donnell and Roseanne Barr kind of had the same uh, outline. If they were Pokemon, if it, who's that Pokemon? <laughs> it might be Roseanne. It might be Rosie O'Donnell. Uh, also, I think Tom Arnold said that uh, Roseanne Barr sexually molested him. Then, but Tom Arnold. But Tom Arnold's a p. Pe- uh, <laughs> I never, I never met either one of them, but I, I would be more on Rosie's side than. T- apparently, she threw a, she threw something at him, because he was an asshole. Oh. Well, see, I haven't heard that, so I can't tell you anything on that. Is Rosie Caller? is Rosie O'Donnell still alive? I don't know. She's probably like a bajillion years old by now. Caller? Caller? Hey, hi. Did you know that Marilyn Manson was born in 69? During the summer? Winter, actually. It was in the summer of 69. I know that song. But he did not. Uh, we are going to... 
Uh, move on. What are we doing here? We're gonna uh, we're gonna listen to some music over here. Nine one music. Uh, we got Lakey inspired summertime love. make the art or does the art make the person or are they not even uh, I like some Marilyn Manson songs you know whatever I'm happy he uh, it, am I happy he exists I don't know would I miss him if he didn't I don't know Never met him. You can't. You can't judge a. You can't judge a person that you've never really met. Really. You can't really love. Uh, you can't love a person either that you haven't met. Okay, we're back to Nick the Rat, everybody. Uh, we're getting late in the show over here. It is. It is almost one Eastern time. And I wish I knew my levels. I, I wish I did more testing. Like, I have to... I need, like, a voice coach or something. Because my... I'm definitely... I'm definitely, uh... I definitely should ensure my vocal cords. Because... If I'm a podcaster... What's the most important thing to me? My brain? No. My my hands? No. It's my it's my voice. It's my vocal cords. What? My The birth of Nick the Rat was a uh, the 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 anniversary show. And that's when he came into existence. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna. What is more fun than looking into somebody's personal belongings without them knowing? When you're with a group of people, like if if you're doing it by yourself, you feel bad. But if there's a group of people, if there's a if there's a group of people, hey, can you lower your radio? I, it's lower. It's lower than me. Caller, if you were to come across somebody's private stuff, would you feel better if it wasn't you looking through it? Like you were with a group of other people? Like if there was multiple people there looking through it? Yeah, like if you walked into a room with like a Scooby-Doo gang, it was you and three other friends or whatever, and you walk into your fifth friend's room... And they found some shit, and it wasn't you, but somebody in your group was to grab a box from under their bed and was like, oh, I found their secret shit. Let's look through it. And you're like, no, and then they do it. Wouldn't you feel better about yourself? 
I guess it would depend on how, like, what the hell's in the box. You know what I'm saying? What if it was a box of tapes that were called uh, Normal Romance? That might not be too bad if it's a mixed collection. But that seems to be like a uh, more of a uh, documentary of sorts, right? I don't know what it is. I'm not. I'm not the one looking through. Or a uh, instructional volume, maybe. Not maybe. If I if I maybe say... that maybe that maybe that was the intent of that. It was going to be sold as an instructional volume on a uh, late night television show somewhere. You know, it's like one of those infomercials or a commercial in between the commercials that KTEL was selling. There's an uh, instructional information set of tapes. What were they? Help. What were they telling you what to do? What were they teaching? What were they? Well, whatever they, whatever they uh, wanted to imply, you would absolve from or absorb from those tapes. You know. What's the last thing you've ever learned? The last thing I ever learned, like as in today, or. Do you think we could listen to a voicemail while we're on the phone line? Oh, probably, yeah. Let's see what happens. I don't know. Well, that's up to you. That's totally up to you. (laughs) Let's listen to a voicemail. You listening? Your mother sucks fucking big fucking elephant dick. Got that? No, okay, look, I hope... Is that like Joe Pesci's cousin or something? It sounded like slow pesci. <laughs> a little bit of that going on too. You asked about the last thing I learned today. I watched like a show on plastic. Yeah. And that's that's uh I actually learned some stuff that I didn't know about plastics. What did you that. learn about plastics that you were like, whoa, I didn't know this previously? Well, I never realized that Bakelite cannot be formed or melted into anything else than its original form. Uh, Did you ever see that commercial about diamonds? Mm, Like, about diamond? Well, uh, well, you know how they say diamonds are forever? Yeah. Bakelite. So is Bakelite? Bake lights yeah, forever. Oh, yeah. Diamonds are, are are bullshit. Whenever I try to fucking like marry marry somebody, I'm like, here's a bakelite ring, and they get so <laughs> moist and erect. They should they should get excited for bakelite. Also, when I get dirty and sexual with these these uh, creatures and characters, bakelite nipple rings, uh, bakelite dildos, and bakelite cock rings. The whole. Bakelite uh, catalog. There is, is a, a set I ordered. It's a beautiful set. It's they called it Baker Hard. Is it all in the black Bakelite, or is it maybe like a tortoise shell? It's a uh, the original color. Okay. Yeah, you gotta go for the original. Gotta go for the old school. You might get uh, a something. You might get. You might catch something if you put some color in there. You mean it, well? At least the dildo, maybe. Well, you have to die. You don't want to die in anything. You, well, if it was like tortoise shell, you like might turn your jiggly bits into a turtle or something like that. Caller. Yes, sir. We're about to listen to another voicemail. There's a lot of voicemails here. There is. I hope it's not that last guy. He's a little bit high strung. He I don't know. Like, I'm just randomly clicking. Let's see this nine one seven seven one nine five nine two three. You could be on the phone line like uh, the caller, or you could leave a voicemail like the voicemail. I need help getting my fucking sewer and my my fucking sewer done. My fucking asshole. My asshole took a big shit in the fucking thing, and I need that shit flushed out, and I'm. My asshole needs your help, buddy. Later.
Hmm. Yeah. That's what's going down on down the in the in the going on down the sewer. That guy needs a snake. A snake? I think he needs a snake. Do Do you want to know something? I th- I think is profound about love. Sure. The uh, if you if you love them, you set them free, and if they love you, they'll come they'll come back to you. I've heard that before, but they um they don't come back. They don't come back to me either. They they tend to never come back. They just they're like yeah, bye. (laughs) They're like you let me go. Woohoo! I'm out of here. That's why I call her. I I know the secret to love. It's not a strong tongue, is it? I could send no. Gonna... I could send you. I got this catalog. There's these. Um, let's just say um, aliens. I'm listening. Uh, I'll talk. I'll talk to you after the show. Okay. Well, we'll this might get me in trouble. Hold on. I I gotta go call her. But. <laughs> Nine one seven seven nine five nine two three. The hell was that? Um, hold on. Where are we in the show over here? We are. Uh, we need to listen to another story. <sighs> yeah, let's let's fill some time with uh, Diane. You just uncorked another tape. All right, here we go, people. So if you got kids in the room, send send them home. Send them back to their parents. Normal romance, a uh, uh, hundred part series. This tape is called. Uh, what is this tape called? H. P. Denton. What the hell? This is a normal romance story, H.P. Denton. Remember, these are just words, people. They're just words. You put the meaning behind them, and the intention, that's on you. (laughs) H.P. Denton. Can I stop stalling, Diane? Please, just play the tape load it where we have we're 100 lawyers deep mystery man has about 10 lawyers we're gonna win just play it it's fine he's got a gun wait don't play it mary lay on the floor of a desolate hut made of twigs and scraps in the middle of a desert. As she lay there, living life like every other average person, she began to wonder, she began to dream. She closed her eyes and took a deep breath and began to run her hands down her chest, her stomach, all the way down to her thighs. And then she ran them back up until she found the only puddle of moisture in hundreds of miles in any direction. She was the wettest thing in that desert. What was coming over her? She was becoming uncontrollably horny. And then her mind began to drift. It began to see something. Clouds. Clouds rolled into her mind's eye, and then it became fog. She felt like she was falling downwards through the clouds into the fog, and then she saw an ocean. Was she dreaming? Was she coming? Then she heard a voice in her head. It was speaking, but not in any language she could understand. Suddenly, she felt something suckling on her toes. It tickled her so much she almost peed. 
but not from fear, though. She knew she was just lost in her own imagination and masturbating furiously, so she showed no emotion other than enjoyment. The tiny mouths on her toes began to duplicate, and soon she was feeling hundreds of tiny mouths sucking on her toes, her feet, and then snaking up her ankles to her thighs. What was happening? She still heard the voice and the ocean was seemingly becoming very active and violent. She then felt the little tiny mouths reach her vagina and they sucked down hard on her lips, a few mouths on each side, and they began to spread her open. And then something entered her, something large and slimy. She began to orgasm, and that's when she saw a light coming out of the water below. It reached her eyes and blinded her. She woke up, and she was covered in sweat and some sort of glowing green ooze. And then, to her surprise, she looked down and noticed her belly was full. She was pregnant. She screamed out of joy. She always wanted a baby. She rubbed her belly, shivering from the earth-destroying orgasm she just had, and said, I will name you H.P. Denton. Sorry, I just got off the phone with my uh, lawyer. He told me that I have to let everybody know that before they listen to any of these clips, they should um, cover their ears to protect what they see. Cheers. Uh, damn, you have a weird brain there, Mystery Man. What the hell was that about? H.P. Denton. Oh, the little... There we go. It's, uh... one oh seven in the morning. 50 degrees. <sighs> I love insemination stories. Wow. I'm gonna... I got some, uh... Uh, Valentine's Day candy right here. It looks like a bag of uh, rabbit turds, but it's actually uh, a dark chocolate covered uh, orange creme. Was there a meaning behind that last story? Are people thinking about it? I don't know. My lawyers told me that I'm not liable, though. Anything in the sewer is legit to put on the show. Like this voicemail, 917-719-5923. So there I was. We're in the middle of it. In and out, in and out. And then she says, oh, by the way, I have a boyfriend. That's when you come. I mean, when you go. 917-719-5923. I'm going to kill somebody, Joey. Well, go ahead and kill everybody. You're a tough guy. Go kill people. Kill Vicky. Kill Salvi. Kill Tommy Como. Kill me while you're out. What do I care? You're killing yourself the way you eat. Y'all fat fuck. Look at you. We need, I don't understand. We need to kill you. Me. Kill me. Spot here. Kill me first. Who are you fucking favorite? Because you're driving me crazy. You're a killer. You're a big shot. Just kill. You're a killer. Sorry. I'm just... That's this dark chocolate. 
It's in my throat right now. It's heavenly. Ah. Ah. Dark chocolate is not cursed. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, where? We are having a great show tonight. The stars are aligned. It's 269. Valentine's Day. It's love. If we could all just actually love each other instead of having any negative feelings for each other. I couldn't see that happening. Because I don't even... Do you love yourself? No, you can't. Because there's definitely shit not to love about yourself. Is love like uh, a black hole? Is the the word more powerful than what it actually is? Like, uh, I had one person that backed me up on the whole Kelvin thing about absolute Kelvin not really being real. It's just a theoretical uh, number. That would occur because, of, you know, it's theoretically what it should happen. Just like Einstein theoretically said a whole bunch of stuff should happen, and then he was proved right throughout his death. <clears throat> so, so love, love might not be exactly what it is cooked up to be. Kind of like, you know, Christmas. Christmas is a, a bastardization of uh, burning wood for the people that died during the winter or something, I think. I think that's what uh, research has said. Uh, so maybe love, what we think of it as today, is a bastardization of a different creature altogether. This creature might have tentacles. Theory of gravity is still theory. Very true, very true. Now there's laws. There's like the laws of thermodynamics. Not the theory of thermodynamics. It's the law of thermodynamics. It's uh can't be destroyed or created, it's transfers and it's like, oh, you know, I have a theory. What goes up must come down. Well, that's uh, actually, you know, that is kind of a theory. You know, what goes up might not come down if you throw it where there's no gravity or what is up. What is okay? We're getting way out there again. I'm sorry, everybody. Let's uh, let's let's so get naked. Let's get naked and have oh oh, Gibrek just came in. Gibrek just came into hashtag super chat. It's an IRC on the zero node. You can get there on uh, nicktherat.com. Oh my. Oh my. It's Valentine's Day, people. Let's listen to Jay Denko with My Funny Valentine. Yellow six causes lymphoma.
I'm going to get this party started. Hey, motherfucker. I just feel like I got drunk, and I'm not even on anything. I haven't drank anything. That is what listeners to Nick the Rat will do to you. Valentine's Day. Well, okay, it's not really Valentine's Day, but it's my show's on Wednesday. It's two sixty nine. Uh, the Valentine's Day is this weekend. It's, it's Sunday. It's a Sunday Valentine's Day. It means uh, no agenda will be uh, the second Thursday of the week. Do you think uh, John or Adam is the okay? John's probably the top. Adam's the bottom, right? If there was, if they were gonna have a, a a sexual encounter, the 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 boys have no agenda. I definitely see um, John giving it to Adam uh, a doggy style. Maybe maybe a reverse blumpkin. Oh yeah, John B. Watching as Adam has sex with. For some reason, just the goat screaming came into my mind. Anyway, this this is getting very this is getting very clearly yes, yeah, clearly Dvorak is the top of the of the group. It's sorry, Adam. <clears throat> we have a lot more. What do we have? We have a. More advertisements. This is good. Oh, this is great. That means we're making money down here. The more ads you play, the more money you make. We have to keep the sewer flowing. We have to keep the the ladies uh, knowing. We have to keep the 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 men glowing and uh, and the rats all knowing. Uh, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. I hope I hope you do love yourself though. Like even if you have nobody nearby to love, I hope you love people. Like, like I love Dolly Parton. That motherfucker is 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 like is like Goku. She Dolly Parton. Do, do, she she's like Goku. I can't see her doing any wrong. She's like the uh, 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 a heavenly creature to me. So I would say uh, Dolly Parton and Elvira, and oh boy, I love breast cyst and hearts look like boobs. Sewer bras made from 100% reclaimed cotton from only the softest toilet paper in the sewer. Why not treat yourself today and keep the boys safe and comfortable? For only $69.99, you could have a dark sewer bra today.
Want good head? Get better brain. How ask you? Eat our pills. Brain pills by Drano. Only Drano care. Why care us? We love money. What pill do? Make brain grow. Big brain, good head. Call now. 917-719-5923. Are you sick and tired of counting your calories while you're trying to get all boozed <laughs> up and get your thing thang on? Well, using the new Nick the Rat rat tail method, you too could not count calories while getting trashed and trying to stick your thing thang in wang wang, if you know what I'm trying to say. Basically, there's one or two steps to this method. Now, if you, if you want me to slow down, I'll slow down. So let me just say it to you nice and slow. Number one, you just want to grab a seltzer, any flavor, any brand, any size. Just make sure it's got some bubbles and it doesn't have uh, all that sugar in there. Now, second, you don't you don't want you don't want the tonic water. The tonic water has the sugar in it. Second, you're gonna want to grab yourself either the bottom of the barrel hello? or the top shelf liquor. Doesn't matter. That's hey, the best hello. part about this whole Wait, entire hold on. rat tail hold method. On, hold on one second. Basically, you just grab whatever you have. You throw some ice cubes and some you seltzer in there. You grab whatever you have. You don't have to worry hold, about hold, calories. Sorry, sorry, caller. Sorry. It's all good. How you doing, Nick the Rat? Hello from Spearfish. You know what? You know what's really upsetting to me. What's up, bud? I think I might have given my val- valentine to somebody else. <laughs> uh, you're, you're thinking about it all wrong. You see, valentines is about an expression of love, and that isn't just between a, a romantic love between a man and a woman or a, uh, however you do that. No, I know. I know. This is the the love that you can pour into Anything that you do I know, but, will count. But still water from Spearfish. Right now I want to pour it into you, but I already poured it into somebody else. I'm actually crying no, right now. No, that's all right. I have, there's, there's enough love for everybody. I, you got to believe in yourself, dude. But I, Just continue, drink a glass of water and give yourself another 15 minutes and you'll be good to go. It's good. That's actually true. Maybe fit, make, can, can I get thirty minutes? Because it takes a while. Yeah, to, you take it. Take the, as much time as you need. Oh, that's oh. enough love for everybody. That's, oh, okay. that's all you gotta know. You know. That makes me feel so good. See, there you go. Well, shit. How you been, dude? How's the sewer treating you? It's, it's pretty. It's pretty good. Can I? Can right I, on. Can I ask you a question? Go for it, dude. Have you have you ever been? Hold on a second. I gotta wipe a tear out of my eye. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Claire, have you ever been in a threesome? Um, no, actually, that's the that's the one I haven't done yet. Have you ever wanted to be in a threesome? Uh, I don't know. I as far as sexual exploration goes, I'm more of an opportunist where. I kind of do whatever is available if I'm up for it. And if not, I just let it slide. And I just haven't had that opportunity for a threesome because. Wait, so you had like foursomes and fivesomes, but not two ladies and not two dudes. And the two dudes thing seems to happen more in in South Dakota than the other way around. (laughs) Diane, put South Dakota on places I have to sign books. I don't have a book yet. Oh, fuck. Uh, (laughs) We get that a lot. Clark, do you own any Dogecoin? Dogecoin? No, uh uh-uh. Me neither. Yeah. No, if if, if the world goes to shit, all I got to do is hike up into the hills and collect a bunch of rocks and... They're all precious stones that I can sell, you know. Would you say yes. that uh, precious stones are more precious than people? No. I, it's, 
You see, people are precious for different reasons than stones are. They're not comparable. They are comparable, though, because they're using the same word. Now, a precious stone is very, very valuable. Now, a precious person is probably like a, like a baby or a child. Yeah, or probably. Or a large you know? person, perhaps. You might say a large person's precious. Like, oh, because wasn't there a movie about a large person that was precious? No, I, I don't remember that happening in The Lord of the Rings. It was about a ring, I think. That was a while ago. It's been a while since I read those books. <laughs> anyway, you were talking about reverse Blumpkins earlier. Can you can you picture uh, what is his name? Smeagol? Schmeagol? Schmeagol! Can you imagine Schmeagol fingering fingering your butthole? Because Not I, mine, but I can imagine him doing it to others. Because, because, like, he always wants to put the ring on his finger. Now, all I have in my mind is Schmeagol and his finger sticking out. Like, it's really. <laughs> I was just thinking about like, what, you, what? What did you say? There's, 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 I mean, there's, there's probably plenty of people out there that'd be into it, you know. So yeah, if if I said jam, let them be. This hey, is, oh, do um, you think? Okay, I have a real serious you, question for you. Okay, yeah, yeah, go for it with a real question. This is a very serious question. Do you do you think uh, women can be as horny as men? Oh yes, absolutely, dude. So, um, and it, it, it hits the, like it hits them in their thirties, and man, oh man, uh, they're not shy about it. They 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 will tell pretty much all of their friends hey i've been just super horny every, all all the time lately why is that and it's like well you're 32 now that's why this means there's definitely women masturbating to thinking schmiegel is sticking his fingers into naughty places there's got to be at least one or two yeah there's got to be there's got to be. be because gotta be. It, the, the internet has taught me a lot of important lessons, and one of those is, there, if you can think of a kink, there's got to be at least a couple people that are into it. Do you think at more the people? Very least. Do you think more people masturbated to, to Schmeagol finger in their butt or to like Frodo's toes? Um. Hmm. I don't know. I. I've never been a foot person, but maybe see people are really into the hobbit feet, you know, maybe having that, that they tuft got, of hair on the top of the foot is something they're that's girthy appealing, too. You know? They're real girthy. Like uh like a hobbit foot would fit perfectly mm -hmm. into a human vag uh ca caller, are you celebrating Valentine's Day this year? Uh, oh, um yeah, usually by working, but this time I'm gonna not work. It it is the first time in years I've not worked on, on Valentine's, Valentine's Day? Day. Whoa! Yeah, then dude, it's, it's been it's been literally over a decade since the last time I did not work on Valentine's Day. How am I gonna harass you and at I'm, work now? Then I always come in on Valentine's Day and I put my my uh, sausage in the buns and I'm like, hey, can you assist? <laughs> <laughs> and then you call the cops on me. I'm gonna miss it this year. Uh, you know, hey, hey, there's there's always other people you can do that to. There's al there's always people you can do that to. It's hilarious. I'm sad. Yeah, sad, I'm yeah, just but, gonna. Uh, I, it's great. I'm because I'm gonna have a nice, quiet, romantic evening of playing video games and and drinking mellow yellow. It's Ooh. gonna be great. Oh what my game, gosh! What game? What game are wonderful. you gonna play? Do you have a Do you have a game lined up? Yes, I I have been playing. Um, I, I've been playing through uh, the Final Fantasy series. I oh, yeah. I just wrapped up uh, Final Fantasy one and two, and fuck both those games. Three is three is and, good. I heard. What's up? I think three is supposed to be good. Three is good, yes, yes. Three is a really good game, and uh, but I don't have that one, so I have to jump ahead. Okay, well, uh, to to Final Fantasy Seven, 
<laughs> and then I have after that Final Fantasy VIII and Final Fantasy IX, and those will be the the ones up on deck. You're not doing six. And yeah, I, I'm not doing ten uh, because um, I hate Titus that much. Oh man! If I was to if I was to do the Final Fantasy series, I would do one. I would go through one, and then I would do uh, part mm-hmm. six or three, whatever you want to call it, six. And then oh would... yeah oh the one with Terra and the battle mech armor at yeah. the beginning right yeah 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 oh that, that is actually probably one of the finest uh, games of the franchise Magic Tech. up I would there do... with Final Fantasy Nine I think is the most underrated games of the whole franchise yeah, it's, it's a great those are, too. are the two best ones and then Final Fantasy Seven's just a little bit underneath that. And I, I kind of don't care for the rest of them. I mean, I, I like them, but weird? they're not really good games. Do you, do you know how <laughs> I see what happened? I think uh, there was there was part there was part uh, six, three or six, which was like okay, we're we're fi- we're finding storylines and and expanding and in groups of people and th- and all mm-hmm. every, they were they were figuring the story, and then when seven hit, it was like. Okay, we have, we have a uh, people, we have a uh, uh, a story, we have fantasy, and then and then eight yeah. was like, let's make this look like it's real life, and then they're <laughs> like, does this work? <laughs> and then they were like, let's go back to nine, let's go back to looking like really weird creatures, and then they were like, okay, let's go back to. Oh, that's that's what was great about it. It yeah. was like you'd be walking through a town and you'd be looking at NPCs and going like. Hey, is that is that a, a, a walrus person walking around? Look at that guy. It could be. He has yeah. four arms for no reason, you know. And it was it was pretty cool. No, it was but great. The real magic. And then of, and then uh, they Final went back Fantasy to like let's look human. Then they went back to like human stuff. It was, but I I am not a huge fan of all the. I I play a lot of Final Fantasy online though. Uh, mm-hmm. Which is fourteen. Oh yeah, that can be fun because it's, it's there's an online aspect that you can't really get it's from. Very the it's very weird. It's very strange. You know? uh, yeah. it's, a, it's 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 a it's a decent game, but you know, I wouldn't recommend anything to anybody. Sure. Yeah. I and I like the only reason I recommend Final Fantasy IX is because the cutscenes are very Pixar esque. Because this is like ten was the first one that had. Uh, hired voice actors to uh, uh, yeah. voice the characters and stuff. But in Final Fantasy IX, every cutscene is kind of like a w- like one of those Pixar shorts where there's no dialogue and everything is told visually, and it's amazing. Like, you can watch a cutscene from Final Fantasy IX, and nobody says a single word ever and you can pick up exactly what's, what's going, going on, on plot wise and emotional wise and you can see the main characters going through their character arcs and it's beautifully done I'm going to have to play that and game again a, Yeah dude uh, yeah you got to play that game Cuz I got to dis I never beat it I got to disc 2 and then there was like this mm-hmm. really heavy grind part where it's like I was half the level I had to be and then I quit, uh-huh. and, then, and then I quit like a, like oh, a, that's a bummer. It really is, but I like do, the, I, I like, should play like it. Like the best way to play through that game is if you like spend a lot of time on the uh Chocobo Forest uh uh treasure hunt game because it, if you play that enough, yeah. you'll get chocographs that will lead you to treasure that you can get to on your Chocobo. And if you do that enough times, you will get really high powered uh items and uh, gear uh, that you wouldn't normally have any access to early on in the game and that's the best way to do it if you want to go through without having to super grind Do you know level. how they have like the the chocobo raising and stuff in these Final Fantasy games? Oh, that was in 7, yeah. Why don't they make it really graphic? Like I want to see chocobo like thick veiny cock and going into some some moist uh, chocobo, uh, uh, thick veiny vagina. Well, okay, not only that, but 
I like, have you ever played the game uh, Road Rash, where it's a motorcycle racing game where you you can pick up weapons and then you can smack the people that are next to you? I, I feel was, like they should have added that element to the chocobo races. It'd be sweet. I was doing some uh, hitchhiking and I caught some road rash, but that would be cool. <laughs> like if you were riding on a chocobo and you could kick some motherfucker down, they don't have that. Like it's <laughs> it's always just like like stamina. It's like oh, keep the stamina at the right level. But if you could like kick a motherfucker, well, like if they mixed chocobo racing with road rash, that would be. Yeah, dude, and Cloud has that giant fuck sword, off sword anyway, uh-huh. you know? Oh, my God. It's hilarious mean... to see Cloud chop off an opponent's chocobo's head, Ooh. and, like, the chocobo keeps running, but it, like, goes off of a cliff, and then when it lands, it explodes, because that's how movies work. Oh, my God. There needs to be an original IP. Okay, here we go. I just thought of a video game. Yeah. It would be like Road Rash, All but right. you're riding on an animal, a creature, and you have uh, one or two different like weapons. It could be like uh, uh, like uh, you could, there's like physical melee people with swords and nunchucks and fucking bows and shit. And then there's like magical ones yeah. that throw fireballs. And and there's like and there's like fucking there's like animal uh, 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 vehicle damage. Like you could blow you could blow like a uh, like a four legged creature one of their legs off and then they run slower. What? <laughs> Why does this game or, exist? Or it or, or it stumbles and you. And then there's got to be like a whole reset system. Oh, like yeah. when you and go like a cloud picks you up and Kart. drags you back to the course. Or yeah, something. yeah. <laughs> yes, dude. Okay, we could we could make some money on. That. I think we found your exit strategy. Oh, what? Fuck yeah, yeah. This is, we'll we'll make a, an R-rated, uh, very <laughs> violent chocobo racing game. This will be an easy sell to Square Enix. They don't have any ideas. I I've seen what they've done with their last games. Well, I heard Near was Near was pretty good. Uh, was it? Oh, I haven't I haven't, I haven't heard I haven't played that game yet. I gotta, me neither. I gotta play it too, actually. But it it. Uh. Do you have Valentine this year? Do you have, a, do you have a... Fantasy Thirteen? Oh my God. That was the worst one of the whole franchise. Hey, hey listen here, God, you nerd, you Final game. Fantasy nerd. Hold on one second here. Do you have a Do you have a Valentine this year? Uh, no, no, uh, and that's on purpose. I I dodged the bullets. You didn't want to buy stuffed animal or um, a plushie or why? Why? Oh aren't... yeah, this is great. I could I could just I could just make myself some food and then I'm 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 showing love to myself. This is great. Ooh, and the. Are you gonna? Are, okay. Are you gonna masturbate on Valentine's Day? It's a day, right? That's a good point. If so, then yes. Yeah, yeah. If so, then yes. Yeah, you, you got to squeeze one on a day to make sure it still works, and then you're good to go. Now, do this you is, need is, do you need visual and audio uh, enhancements to help you masturbate? Do you think women and men uh, define the same things? stimulating oh no um you see i i think that women are are more apt to like like they like a narrative so they can get off to uh like like raunchy novels or uh like erotic um like audio books or then that kind of thing i I used to go to libraries some of these chicks and they and and they Still. They will do that more than the traditional porn. It's, it's still water. This is what you gotta to do. Me. You gotta do this. I gotta. I gotta. I got a little tip for you. You gotta go to the library. Okay. And you got to borrow <laughs> some of the erotic novels. Now I want you to uh-huh. sniff them while you're masturbating, because they smell like they smell like the loveliest women in the world. <laughs> Educated, no, uh, lady it, vaginal okay, juices. You haven't been to the Spearfish Public Library. It will also smell like the oldest ladies ever. It's it's a mixed <laughs> bag. <laughs> it's beautiful. That's <laughs> uh, that's yeah, a weird anyway, thing. It's like, it's like men hilarious. are they, 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 everybody's like men are pigs, but women spread the stuff over books at public libraries. There's there's no. <laughs> Yeah, oh <laughs> I think you make a really good point here. That's a very good point. Is at least when guys masturbate, it's in their, it's in their own uh, like unwanted tube sock, you know. It's, 
It's in their own dorm room. It's in their own place. They they think. shut themselves up. They're not they're not they're not picking out books from the library. And you might say you might say Nick the Rat, you're being you're being very discriminatory. There's uh Kindles and shit, but the to to bait to a a physical book is is a lot more stimulating than than fucking flipping through an electronic pad. You don't want to be sitting there. There the is pad. an addictive nature to actual books, you, and the, it's because there is a rare um, microscopic uh, fungus that can kind of live in the pages of some books if it's just left sitting on a bookshelf for uh, decades and decades and decades. It's the, when you when you get these old scholars that just love sniffing the pages of a book, it's because. Whether they know it or not, they are getting a high off of a mildly hallucinogenic fungus that's been growing in the pages for the, the glue too, right? five the glue decades or so. I heard about this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't thought about this one for years, but yeah. That, hell, you could probably do a whole episode on that. Yeast is uh, full of bacteria, and bacteria is life, and... Like Star Trek, I feel like Jean Luc Picard going on fucking uh, travel in space and time, sniffing these yeah, books. That's just exactly what it is. We could uh, instead of doing like wine tasting, we could have book sniffings. <laughs> Dude, and honestly, what better way to open up your imagination to a a fictional world and a, and, a, and a wonderfully written book than to be with it unintentionally guided by the very subtle and very mild hallucinogen that's just living in the pages. It's like this species was made to make books awesome. There needs to be a, a video game with a smell experience. They always have like this, like, oh, you go to the movie and you can smell the picture. They need to make a video game that has this, uh... Nah, that's stupid. I don't know if it's stupid. It's just, it's hard to make that work without having things shoved up your nose. That's... Colors. And I think that's the biggest reason why you, they, you don't see that kind of thing, you know? It's stupid. Just admit it's stupid. Okay, it's stupid. Let's talk about... It wasn't stupid at all. It's a great idea. I'm telling you, I can make a lot of money off of it. 917-719-5923. Hey, Mr. Rat. Yo. I got a Kamala dragon walking down the street, walking, looking for me. Are you serious? You gotta help me out. Call me back. All right, I'll call you back. Bye. Bye. How do I call you back? It's it's so much later than when you left that voicemail. I'm not calling you back. That's uh Thank you for the call. Nine one seven seven one nine five nine two three. Hello, Nick the Rat. Hello. Well, I just wanted to let you know that I hear you. I don't know if you hear me, but the, but that but that's okay. Um. I want to regale you with a Valentine's Day message. Oh, let me have a chocolate. Because it's the va- VD episode. Got that so I thought, I thought that would be cool to leave you a, a message and and say, um, uh, at least you could use this. I'm not saying it's from me, but but you could use this. Um. So, you know, for marital love, prior to marital loves, I, I think that would be a, a good move. Um, you know, it's like uh, you are my number one 
rat in the sewer. Whoa. Or, or a lady in the sewer. Anyway, I hope it works. I hope you uh, get your marital loves on at, at the uh, in the sewer, and um, you can you can uh, leave me a voicemail if you want. If you want to call me back, I'll give you a call back number, and that's four three zero two zero one four eight four one or four three zero two zero one four eight. Or sorry, hug one. My my four three zero two zero one hug one. I should repeat that. Sorry. Um. Anyway, uh, love you. Bye. For a good time, call four three zero. Two zero one four eight four one. It looks like we got some donations while we were having the show. I could read them during the next donation thing, or I could read them now. I'm gonna do them now. So I think they were donated for this show. I don't know. We got thirteen thirty seven. Play my game, Nick. I'll spam you about it before next show. Ramdas. What game is this, Ramdas? Sounds very interesting. We have a 420 from LD. Thank you so much for uh, the... Uh, is that a subscription? 420 is the sub number, which is... Which is like a... Uh, if you do a subscription for 420, that's like a dollar per episode. Each episode's about two hours... 11, 12, 1, well, it's all oh, three hours, but, uh, three, 12 hours a month, $4 for 12 hours. Uh, I'm, I, I come cheap. 917-795-923. Diane, hit the button. Fuck, you're making me look bad. Hey, Nick. Hey, uh. You ever, you ever get those like uh you know those funny feelings in your pants when you I don't know when 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 you like when you're like you know kind of lonely but uh well anyways well I hope this Valentine's that you you like uh you know score oh th- <laughs> yeah I'm scoring right now don't worry don't you worry your uh, little tale about it uh. RSS feed is broken for 268, won't refresh. What? What? That's a text message. And I got a text message to Junta. Uh, we have more voicemails. We have one. Wait, actually, let's play a voicemail. Then we're going to play the last incriminating part of... What uh, would what? Nick the Rat be more skeptical of? Okay. Space drugs or space Jesus? Also, fuck Marilyn Manson. If you want a good, like... Super easy to find, totally clean for YouTube video to see where he's a piece of trash. And by the way, he totally deserved that fucking giant gun prop falling on him and breaking his leg. I don't ever wish mm. violence on people, but when you're pulling shit like that. Imagine if that wasn't an accident, like that was set up. I remember when he got that thing f- that dropped on him and fucked him up. Maybe it was the person he pointed the gun at. It was like doing shit behind his back and fucking... Try to kill him with a giant gun. Whoa. I shouldn't... Uh, I got lawyers. Don't blame me for shit. Bound to get fucking hurt. You probably brought it on yourself. You speak to some bitch. But there's a video where he runs out into the audience and he just starts smacking buttons on the uh, front of house guy's audio console. This guy's kind of a piece of shit. Yeah. I still kind of like, I believe I can fly. I believe I could touch the sky. And then there's that, that sloth flying across the screen. Like, was all of the shitty things R. Kelly did to people worth the meme of the sloth flying across my screen singing that song? I don't know. 
it's not good. It's not. It's it's not what he what he did is not good. But that sloth flying. Let's listen. Let's listen to an illegal tape from Mystery Man. I gotta get out of here. It's it's late, and I have to watch some pornography and fly away while I play Final Fantasy. Uh, a normal romance tape. We have hundreds of them. But we're going to play one more. I don't know if people like these. If people like them, I'll play them again on another show. I have a lot of tapes here. But if if you don't like it, I'm not going to do this again. I'm not going to play. I kind of feel like I, uh, I'm embarrassing Mystery Man, and I might get sued for your entertainment. So let's... Uh, fuck. Okay, let's let's get out of here. Let's... let's uh. Mystery, mystery man's little fucking dirty stories, voicemails, music, we're gone. That's the show. That's what we're doing. Diane, do it. De this one is called BF versus the Greys. BF versus the Greys. What the fuck? Is best friend? What is that, Diane? What is this? We should have listened to these before we did the show. Come out of that. Let me out of the, the plexiglass. Fuck. Bigfoot was hanging out in a titty bar on Mars, drinking a martini and chatting it up with a few of his mates who all happened to be little gray aliens. Bigfoot, what brings you here? You know Martian ladies would never fuck you, you giant hairy ballless bastard. Bigfoot knew the bouncers in the bar carried death rays, so he kept his calm and replied, I don't need gray pussy. Earth girls are easy. Oh, are they? Let's make a gentleman's bet then. Let's see who can score with the most earth women as possible tonight. Tonight, Bigfoot looks shocked. Tonight, hmm. You know what tonight is though, right? Oh, we know Bigfoot, they replied. It just happened to be the night where Mars, Jupiter, Earth, and Uranus aligned. All the women on the planet they were going to morph into giant Amazonians and they were going to fuck, kill, and eat all the men on the planet. Bigfoot asked, what are the stakes? If we win, said the aliens, we get to tie you up, shave your ass and titties, drip Martian bee honey all over your body and test out our new probe tech on you. New probe tech? I've been hearing about that for years. There's no way you evolved your probing techniques this quickly. Oh, but we have. Our probes powered with quantum tech and now they can now squeeze through any clenching no matter how tight the gap. Oh fuck. You guys, that's amazing. I've been reading about that in last month's Alien Twink publication. Oh yes, Bigfoot. We also have included nanobot teeth that we obtained from some Jupiter horror that had a futuristic dentana that we had never seen before. Rest in peace, James. Bigfoot looked down at his tits and his ass, and then back at the aliens. He chugged his martini, gently put the glass down on the table, and left the bar. What a bitch. Okay, look. Uh, I don't know if we're ever going to play those again. I don't, I don't... Diane, maybe we should lock them back up. A couple years? Maybe next year? We'll play some more. We have hundreds of these tapes, by the way. They're a little fucking weird. Um, which is fine. You know, it's fine. Uh, we are coming to a close of the show. 
I hope everybody has a lovely Valentine's Day. I hope uh, they do not uh, get tricked to join a sex cult. I hope they do not get uh, touched up by a silly fucking Hollywood asshole. I hope they do leave voicemails like this. And see some of the bitches got a suspect hand tattoo. And I hope they call in like this. Hello, caller. Oh. Oh, 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 ah, oh. 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 thank the Lord. So I finally, yeah. <laughs> so I finally fucking got through. Okay. Yeah. So I'm put the other headset on. I got two headsets going here. One you need three. Show on the... Yes. Okay. You know who I am by my phone number, but I think everybody else on this fucking show knows who I am by my fucking accent. So here we go. So back in the day. Yeah. We gotta get, okay, we gotta get back to talking about sex, because that's what I thought we were doing, we're gonna talk about tonight. Let's talk about so sex, we gotta baby. Talk about sex. <laughs> so, my first, I was 16 years old. I had an interest with this girl. She had a best friend. We got him in my backyard. Yeah. Had uh, those uh, lounge chairs. I put three of them side by side, and I was in the middle. And that was my first sex experience where I fingered two girls at the same time. And they had to have known that they were both being fingered at the same time. Well, yeah, because they could uh, smell each other's uh, fe- feminine excretions. So eventually one of them became my girlfriend. Unfortunately, I never had sex with her. I was 16. Uh-huh. She was a, a year or so old, younger. Moving on, I called in earlier. I'm going to skip a few girlfriends. Senior trip, we're at Pine Grove. I don't know if you want to ever know where Pine Grove is. It's up in the uh, uh, Adirondacks, I think. Where all the pines are. Um, say again? It's, there's all those pines up there. Yes. <laughs> Pine Grove. Oh, sorry. Pine Grove is a dude ranch. We went up there for, yeah, so it's a big place. We went there for a senior trip. I never had as much alcohol as I ever had at 17 years of age. I was a year younger than I should have been in high school. Went up there on senior trip. I fucking got wasted on alcohol. I don't know where it came from. I didn't bring any. I didn't buy any. I fucking got wasted. Within an hour, I was throwing up in tubs. I I was meeting people that I I knew, knew of all year long. They didn't yeah. know me, but here I am meeting them, throwing up in their tubs. Okay, got over that. We're finally in the lobby. Okay, sober sobering up, kind of kind of knowing where I fuck I am, who I am. So I'm talking with these girls in the lobby, watering them. I uh, strike up a nice conversation with somehow oh to go back a moment half the dude ranch pine grove was blocked off it wasn't being used at the time there there was uh rooms that weren't heated weren't being used but they still had electricity in them one of them i found was unlocked so i had i had found a room that was unlocked with electricity no heat so Back to what I was talking about. In the, in the lobby. Yo, Pine Talk Grove Dude Ranch looks awesome, by the way. It's like a giant pool. It was. It was. Several years ago, me and my friends, our kids, fucked up their arcade. and <laughs> it gets stupid. And we can't go back there ever again. <laughs> but that's another story. <laughs> anyway, going back to when I was 17... Not when I was a few years ago. So there I was. There I was. In the lobby. Met this girl. I said, I found a room. So we went back to the room. And we're having a good time. (laughs) And in the middle of it, she goes, we're we're almost done. And it was the fucking weirdest experience I ever had. Because basically, we're almost at the end. And she goes, I have a boyfriend. And then I, I paused. And then I continued. 
<laughs> and then we finished. Did you go? We did you go bobsledding? What's that? Did you go bobsledding? It's the act of laying the erect penis along the butt crack and essentially titty banging the butt cheeks. Not with her, no. I've so, d- I've I've gone yeah. bobsledding before. That's a sex act I've done. But that was like my sex girlfriend. I was seventeen. Actually, that was not my sex. That was a second woman I had sex with. That's probably my I don't know what girlfriend that was. Nonetheless, so I became we became boyfriend and girlfriend. Even though she had a boyfriend already, she still had a boyfriend. Boyfriend two so point She had to like yeah. get rid of me. So she pawned me off on one of her friends. <laughs> so. I heard an eye went out. <laughs> but yeah, we go fuck my friend OB. Pass the ice cube. <laughs> <laughs> so we had, pet, we had a game of pass the ice cube. That was one of the best times in my fucking life. So there was the girl I met in, at the dude ranch. She was pointing me off on her best friend who lived two doors down. And there was the other girl which I knew from high school. And there I was playing pass the ice cube with the three of them in her house. And that was like one of the best days I ever fucking had because that leads to a whole bunch of other fucking shit. But we only have limited time. So I'm going to fast forward. I played past the ice cube before. The, That's when you take a, a chopsticks, right? And you got to like grab it. And you... Go on, please. I didn't play chopsticks with them. <laughs> but that sounds familiar. Who, who did I play chopsticks with? Oh my goodness. I really, before, I, I love my wife, but before I met her, uh, I knew a few girls, and I love it. <laughs> um, I, didn't get ma- I didn't get married until I was 31, so. <laughs> I gotta beat this story. Diane, hit beep. All right, go on. Where, where is this? So, I'm gonna fast forward, bunch, pass a whole bunch of things. So, okay. Now I'm, tw- now I'm 20. We move out of my... I, uh, I was kind of like a foster kid in a way with my family because I uh, rejected them. I moved in with my fr- best friend and li- we lived at his house and he didn't get along with his mother. So we finally got jobs. We moved out. We got an apartment and he joined the Marines and I fucking had the apartment. And oh my goodness, that was sort of the best years I ever fucking had. My, single in my apartment. But Okay, I'm going to take a, I'm going uh, oh my God, which one should I choose? But, uh, okay, here we go. Let's get past the apartment. I'm going to, I'm going to jump past all that to where I, I'm single now. And for some reason, I'm going up to Connecticut. I'm going up to Connecticut bars. I'm, I'm fucking wasted on the dance floor of the art bar. I don't know if you know that. It doesn't exist anymore. Connecticut. I've never, I've, never been to, I've never been to Connecticut. Fucking no. junk on the. It was like a limelight. Oh, I'm totally skipping past the girl I fell in love with. That oh, that's a whole other story. But okay, Art Bar, 1991 maybe. So 1991 on the floor, drunk. I've been there before. I meet this girl. She smells like armpits. <laughs> <laughs> Turn, okay, we're dancing on the floor, fucking totally into it, make it out on the dance floor, I bring it back to my van. Yeah, I was the guy with the van. Dance you don't have to worry about how you smell at that point, right? That's, that's, that's a plus. No, I smell good. Come back to her. <laughs> but it turns out she's a French au pair who's living in Connecticut as an au pair to, you know, take care of the house, the kids, whatever. But I'm totally fucking wasted. So we leave the dance floor and we get in my van and my friends come. Oh, so we go to the second fucking club. I have to fucking wait to the second fucking club. So we go from Connecticut back to White Plains, New York. Did you bring the the French arm hair with you? Who? Did you bring the French lady with you? Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) So I bring her... I don't know what my friends have. Um, you know, this is 20-something years ago. Uh, yeah, actually, it's 30-something years ago. So 30-something years ago, I'm with my friends. We go to the side of the club. Finally get back in the van. 
they were having sex, and they fucking didn't lock the back fucking doors. So they fucking opened the doors, and there we are on the fucking floor of the van that has no seats. Because I had I bought a cargo van, and it stinks like so armpits in there. And your friends are like, "Man, you could have washed up before this." And you're like, "It wasn't me." Actually, it was as far as I remember. Good. Nonetheless, I I drop her off the next morning in Connecticut at the house, and it was fucking mansion whatever. So she's a French au pair from France. So that was pretty cool. So I met a French, I met a French woman, had sex with her. I think she was younger than me. I was probably 21. She was probably 18. <laughs> Did so she say wee wee? Forward. What was that? Did she say wee wee? That's the only French I know. I'm <laughs> You're fucking me up again. You fucking do that. I continue. You sorry. Sorry. Go, go. Go forth. Sally forth. If, if she said wee wee, I don't recall that. She probably said, ooh, ooh, but <laughs> never went. <laughs> now we're giggling. We're like, guys, fuck it. You know what? Now you just reminded me of what Dvorak and Curry said in one of the No Gen shows, like two No Gen shows ago, about the giggling girl. I'm like, wow, JCD, that's a little sexist, but you guys are the giggling guys on the show because they're. Yeah, crack, they're like fucking cracking jokes all the time and giggling. Yet, here we are. We're giggling guys right now. Nonetheless, so now we fast forward back to my apartment. Okay. This girl. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to say her name. I've never. I don't know who, who knew her, how she got my apartment, but I had a lot of parties in my apartment. This girl, I'm going to try not to mention her name, because it was one of the fucking craziest, wild relationships I ever had. It was Cindy Crawford, wasn't it? No, it was, she was a few years younger than me, and I was 21, she's probably 18. She was a virgin, and I, 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 I was totally... I did not know what the fuck was what when I was 21. I only got by by, by the skin of my teeth, best of luck, whatever, whatever phrase you want to use. I had fun, and I had no methodology. It was just because of who I was that I was a freak. It was free. I was free. But this girl turns out that she had such a fucking crush on me. She would have done anything for me which was kind of weird because I'd never seen a girl like this and she was a virgin. So. Love is w weird. Do you think she loved you at that point? She probably had, like, she probably thought she loved you. She, uh, you know what? I think she did love me and I appreciate that. And now that I say that, all the, all the women I've ever been with, I really appreciate I've had great times with them. There's almost no women that I've been... I can't think of one off the top of my head that uh, any woman that I've been with that I really regretted. Do all... And you, um, sir, are very lucky. I, I, I consider myself very lucky, or at least I, I think I do. I, as I say, make lemonade out of lemons, but I don't think I've ever had anything that ever was scarred. You know what, except for one time where we were hanging out, me and a couple of friends, we hang out, we met these girls. One was, I think they were half sisters. I can't, I don't think they were, they were full sisters. One was really tall and thin. The other one was no, normal. But, so I, for some reason, my tall friend hooked up with the normal sized woman and I hooked up with a girl that was like six foot one. And I'm only five foot nine. And it was weird because I think she was a virgin. And she and I'm 20 something at the time. She was probably about the same age, maybe a, a year or so old, younger. But it was weird. It's weird saying this out loud. But it was like having sex with a corpse. She was just like slapping around. That, 
Yeah, because she had no experience. Well, she's also really and tall, I too, was, so it takes a lot of energy to move those limbs. So it might have, uh, yeah. might have slowed I know down. You're Justin, but this is a real weird philosophical point in my life where I didn't know that I was supposed to instruct her or tell her, not, not all women are like this. Oh, no, no, yeah. Some are. But this particular woman was like that, that because she didn't have experience, apparently I was supposed to tell her what to do and how to do it, which was alien to me because apparently she took all the cues from me and I didn't give her any at the time. I was looking for them. Huh. So it was almost like having sex with a corpse and it was kind of weirded out. I had sex with the one time and never again because I was weirded out. I and it made me realize that I don't like having sex with corpses. I don't like having sex with women that don't respond. And it made me realize in the bigger picture about these uh, robotic females or robots that supposedly look like females. I'm not into necrophilia. I'm definitely. I, I very much like what a woman responds. I thought I, I was like, talking to like, Marilyn Manson for a second. I thought you were like the the sleeping uh, corpse like uh, character there. <laughs> have you ever? I, it, go ahead. It, have you ever? Have you ever like um, uh, experienced something with somebody that was just like uh, like like they did something amazing, like uh, like say it's kissing or something? Like wow, that person was a great kisser, or uh, this yeah. person was great at at one thing or another. It's it's very strange how some things are. I miss that. Yeah, it's it's very it's very strange how things are like because sure she might be a great kisser, but she might uh, she might kill people, you know, oh, or something. But uh, yeah, that was that that was the one, that was a girl that was a virgin that was that was uh, had a crush on me. Ah. she was awesome. I couldn't believe I had to ask this uh, several times in the beginning. You're really a virgin? And, like, she was fucking awesome at everything. She did everything great. And it just amazed me that she had supposedly no experience before that. It turned out she was a little bit psycho, from my perspective. But it was, you know when oil and water mix, when two particular personalities mix? Yeah. Well, you know, you may get along with other people great. And she may get along with other people, right? But when you two come together, it's just like fucking oil and water. It goes crazy. That was the kind of relationship we had. But uh, there's yeah. there's there's some good parts to bad relationships, and then there's some bad parts to good relationships. <laughs> yeah, and I try to learn from all of them. And even the bad things that happened to me, I think, were excellent learning experiences. And I. I can't think of any woman that I've been with as truly bad, except for that one experience with a girl that practically laid there like a corpse. Were you that ever you know, taken advantage of? Out. Do you think you ever taken advantage of? Ah, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Not to my recollection, no. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird. Uh, the, it seems the only people that ever do taking advantage of is, is, is are dudes. It's like this weird, fucked up thing. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's not. I don't know. And there's, oh my God, and there's girls that I didn't even know that were into me, and later on I found out. I was like, ah, oh, man, really? <laughs> it's, in hindsight, is um, it's very annoying. It's very... <laughs> There's so many, so many things you could live back on. You're like, wow, I could have done this, that, and that other thing. Well, you did. Well, you didn't. There, you didn't. You yeah. Said. Well, that that comes up to 2020. Hindsight is 2020. Where I'm like, oh, if I knew what I knew, if I knew then what I know now, then I could have done this. Well, now and it's 2021. Like, it's too late. It's too late. Well, I, I'll I'll finish with this. Yeah. Where I'm gonna admit this. My wife and I were going through some issues. My wife and I got married in 1999. My wife and I were going through some issues with our 
marriage and had a lot to do with our kids, of course. We have three boys, three three children, all, all boys. And it was mm, uh, 2017. So I was getting annoyed. I didn't want to hang around the house. So circumstances are, I met one of my high school sweethearts that I was far more into her than she was into me. I somehow met again and contacted after so many years. I met her in 2017. So from actually, when was I in high school? In 19... Oh. Um, 19... 19- oh. 1987. 1988 is when I met her. And I re-meet her in 2017. So it's a few years later. <laughs> that's so, like the, the <laughs> last time was then, and then, the, wow, that is a huge, that's a chunk of time. Turns out she was married, and she was, she, she's from the Bronx, as I, as I was, as I am. And we were good friends, and it turns out that she had moved to Japan and married a Japanese guy. Well, And I always knew that she was xenophilic. I always knew she had an attraction to foreign people. And yeah, I did astrology as a teenager. But getting back to 2017, we start hanging out and we really hit it off. Hung out. Um, we started hanging out on the weekdays, um, going to clubs. Um, actually, she was the one that brought me to the limelight for my 21st birthday. The only time I've ever been in the limelight was when she brought me there for my 21st birthday. Were, were you hanging, was this like a platonic hanging out, or was it like a, anything more than that? Oh, now they, okay, now they bring up the, the limelight. Holy shit. Okay, we were there. I've never been there. I've never been in a Manhattan club. I've only been in Long Island clubs. So she brings me there because she's always been, she's a straight lace. She's, oh my God, super, super beautiful Italian looking girl. She's, oh my God. She's the, the most beautiful girl I've ever met. I think I've ever will see. That's part of the reason why I crush on her. But she brings me to the limelight. Me and her, when I'm 21, I'm single. For my birthday, December of whatever it was. So we're going to the club, finally sit down somewhere, and then there's these two women. Two women, these two couples, they're sitting on the couch next to the couch that we're sitting on because we're taking a break. We've been there for a while. So the two guys get up and they're saying they're going to get drinks. So the two girls are talking. Within less than a minute, they start, they got close, they start making out. They start. <laughs> They start fucking going at it. Do you think, do you think drugs her, were involved looks, in this? I look at the, my ex-girlfriend. She looks at me. Uh, yeah, I'm, we were only girlfriends in high, uh, girlfriend and boyfriend in high school. So, and we're looking at each other like, okay. <laughs> so we're, we're watching, and then they're fucking going at it. One's on top of the other. And then the boyfriends come back. Mm. So... They get their drinks, they do whatever, they hang out, and then the girls get up and leave, and then the guys are going at it. <laughs> and they're like, okay, it's time to go. <laughs> and that, was, that was not my kind of thing. <laughs> so that was my experience with the limelight. And nobody was the wiser, yeah. Limelight was fun. I've been there before. They have like, like angel one. statues on the, on the ceiling and stuff and crazy lights all over. That was a... Very weird church. Yeah. See, see, I was at the limelight a couple of years. That had to be one. I, I probably was at the art bar around that time as well. And that's why the art bar was like a miniature limelight. There was no, it was not at, 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 at all like the limelight, but the lighting, the music, the, the dance, it, it gave me a sense of the limelight without being the limelight, without the depravity. So I like the, line, I like the, the art bar in Connecticut. So it was pretty cool. 
and it was no cover to get in, as far as I recall. <laughs> but nonetheless, <laughs> and it's and it's, the drinks are much cheaper. Except at two o'clock, they turn on the fucking bar lights, and you had to get out at two o'clock. That's Connecticut. <laughs> nonetheless, <laughs> um, oh, let's let's come up to my. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna. I hope my wife doesn't listen to this episode. <laughs> uh, d- yeah. That would okay. that that might be that's nah, probably won't matter. It's you know past is past. So and now now I'm about twenty five, and my friends are like, "Oh, uh, you remember our friend back in the day? We used to hang out with him. Now he's the bartender at this bar, local bar. You want to go? You want to go hang out and hang out with him?" I'm like, "Okay, sure, let's go." So I'm hanging out there, and all these fucking people that I know, like nine. Nine out of ten of the people I know from the neighborhood. Okay. There's a few that I don't know. I meet one of them, and she's fucking out of her mind. She's drunk. She's she's doing... She's asking people for money. And I can see that she's... You know what? Maybe I didn't see the first time. Well, we came back a couple of times. So halfway through the year, I'm, this is probably my fourth time back at the bar. And I'm watching her because I finally have an interest in her and her friends. And she's coming around with all her coins. I'm 25, and she's like 20. She shouldn't even be in the bar. Are you still there? I'm here. I'm at the bar with you. Oh. Even though I'm not supposed to be. That's weird, because I thought I heard sound in the background. My apologies. So, there she is, going around, asking... Can you buy me a beer? And I know she's got fucking money. She's playing all these guys. She's going from one guy to the next guy to play them for their money to buy her a beer. <laughs> I'm like, this fucking psycho woman. So she gets up to me eventually. And I go, no, I don't have any money for you. So <laughs> she looks at me. She, she throws her coins down. Because this is a bar where you can, in 1995, you can buy... A seventy-five cent draft. Holy shit! This is the cut. <laughs> yeah, and this is you go to any other bar. It's, it's three dollars. It's tough. Seventy-five cent draft. So I remember that. That's a phrase. So she throws her coins down, dimes, nickels. <laughs> like, oh my god, this is a fucking mess. So at the end of the night, I would have ran away. I would have ran. Go ahead. You would have ran? I would have ran, well, yeah. This, turns, there's a lady throwing fucking quarters and dimes and nickels and shit on the floor. That She's she's not stable. It turns out she's playing every guy in the fucking room for their money so that she can buy drinks, but she's saving her money. I corner her at the end of the night, we make her on a full table, and I take her to my van around the corner. <laughs> Yeah, we have great sex. <laughs> Three years later, we are engaged. Two years of that, we're married. Two, um, the next that that year, we start looking for a house. We go all over Lower Westchester. We come back. We find a house back in the Bronx. Turns out the house that I bought is two hundred feet away from where I parked my van, and around the corner of the bar that we met. Wow, that we're, is a Valentine's still, Day story. And we're together. This is our twentieth year. That is beautiful. That is be- that is a beautiful I'm story. Gonna, I'm gonna end up that. <laughs> you better go before she listens to this. <laughs> Have a good night. She's the love of my life. Thank you, Dick. Uh, Have a great night, man. <laughs> Let's listen to some more voicemails and get the hell out of here. Actually, we have one more. Uh... Hold me close, oh Tony Danza. <laughs> Count the headlights on the highway. Lay me down and she's a landing. You had a busy day today. I 
not too many people know that that song was written about Tony Danza and his uh, role on Who's the Boss. Uh, I didn't know that. See, I thought they were always, uh, that's always why saying talk, uh, talks about the sheets of linen because he was a uh, he was a maid on Who's the Boss. So uh, they didn't know who the boss was during those years because apparently uh, Bruce Springsteen was on or Bruce Springfield. Bruce Spring something, whatever his name is. And Bruce Spring, Spring and Steen. Uh, anyways, he was on hiatus from being the boss, so they asked the question, who's the boss? To which uh, Tony Danza replied, uh, uh, are you serious, Angela, or something like that. He had a tagline on there. I don't know what it was right now. But... Uh, Escapes me right now. I always thought that I didn't know it was about Tony Danza. I thought they were saying uh, uh, "Tidy Danzig." I always thought they were talking about how clean Dan Danzig was. Mother, I came to clean your house today. Uh. Still war. I apologize, but we gotta get back to sex stories. <laughs> Nick, I'm trying to get you live so that we can have a conversation, but I don't know if you got too many calls or you're busy. Uh, you want to not take my calls? But I'm so happy you, you told me all the sex. sex. <laughs> I wanted, I actually wanted to reciprocate some of my sex stories, but I think that that'd probably be uh, bad for. Uh, uh, well, uh, let's, let's listen to Mystery Man's. Final story we got here. I think this is... Did we listen to this? I don't... We already listened to that. We're going to leave. We're getting the fuck out of here. Uh, thank you, Tony Rat, for that call. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. I hope you have... Uh, I hope you love... Love stuff. Love stuff. Uh, even even past loves that have uh, missed opportunities are still love. It, it sits with you. Remember those... As you advance and evolve and learn from your 2020 hindsight. Now, if you if you knew what you could have done, you could do it now. And you'll know how to do it better. So do you better and do those that you love even better than you could. Uh... <laughs> yeah, still water. Talk about some sex. Anyway, we're going to we're going to get the fuck out of here. It's 230 in the morning. East Coast. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. Happy episode 269, and uh, we'll be back next week with more Nick the Rat Radio. We have uh, Danny Faridi with love. The wider with them. Coming in hard. L is for the way you look at me. Oh. V is a very, very extraordinary E There's even more than anyone that you adore And love is all that I can give to you And love is more than just a game for two Two in love can make it Take my heart and please don't break it. Love is made for me and you.
here. The Russians, Chocho, they're coming. And the Americans from the other way. And England and China and Africa and India. The whole world is coming. Help me with this ammo. <laughs> and how will we do it? Terribly. Our only friends are the Japanese. And just between you and me, they don't look very Aryan. Remember that Jew I told you about? Oh, yeah. I still have her. She's basically my girlfriend now. Oh, good for you, Jojo. I'm a girlfriend. But you know she's Jewish. There are bigger things to worry about than Jews, Jojo. There's Russians somewhere out there. There wasn't anyone. I heard they eat babies and have sex with dogs. I mean, like, that's bad, right? Sex with dogs? Yeah. The Englishmen do it, too. We have to stop them before they eat us and screw all our dogs. It's crazy. And now Hitler's gone. We're really on our own. Don't kill animals. Rats have rights. Fire.